I'm going to start this video with a simple question. Has anyone in your life been affected by cancer? I'm reasonably certain that the answer for absolutely everyone watching is yes. Cancer is the cause of 12.5% of all deaths worldwide. In the USA alone, it kills almost 600,000 people a year. It takes children, young people starting careers and family, and it takes the mature and elderly. It can affect our mothers, our fathers, our grandparents, siblings, cousins, friends, our children, our teachers, mentors, and even our heroes. If your loved one was presented with a diagnosis of cancer, particularly an aggressive or advanced cancer, no doubt you immediately wanted to know what could be done. Into this emotional maelstrom comes a mixture of saints and frauds. The saints are those who have selflessly dedicated their lives to curing and treating cancer. The frauds are those who try to profit from desperation, from fear of loss. It's not always so easy to tell the two apart. I want to present the case of Dr. Stanislaw Brzezinski in my home state of Texas. Dr. Brzezinski owns and operates a private clinic that offers alternative cancer treatments and has been the source of some controversy. While there's a great deal I would like to talk about, from the point of view of my background as a cancer researcher, I want to present three red flags about the Brzezinski Clinic that you can confirm for yourself. If you, or someone you know, is considering a referral to the Brzezinski Clinic, I hope you'll review the content here first and take the time to ask some critical questions of the clinic operators. The decision is yours and yours alone. I only want to highlight three undisputed facts that would give me pause that I suggest you research on your own. Fact 1. The Brzezinski Clinic have initiated 62 clinical trials of cancer compounds and only completed one. Clinical trials are required for new drug approval in the U.S. They must pass through four phases. First, testing for safe dose, then effectiveness against a particular cancer followed by a comparison of effectiveness versus existing therapies, and lastly into long-term monitoring of harmful effects. Every clinical trial has to register before starting, a practice intended to prevent drug companies from sweeping unsuccessful results under the rug. Not every clinical trial manages to recruit enough patients. Some are terminated early, and some are closed when it's obvious the drug is unsafe or ineffective. For every three completed trials, there's probably one that was closed prematurely. However, the Brzezinski Clinic have an unprecedented 62 trials pre-registered, but only one of them ever went all the way to completion. That's our first red flag. Why is a clinic supposedly developing new therapies for cancer not finishing their studies, determining whether the treatment is effective or not? Instead, they always just give up and cancel the study, the final stage. One possible explanation is that clinical trials are the only way that unproven drugs can be given to patients without major medical liability issues. It's possible that someone could abuse the clinical trial system to use ineffective or toxic therapies long term. That is, they could exploit a loophole in the laws designed to protect patients running endless trials to end run around safety and efficacy requirements for new drugs. I'm not going to say that Dr. Brzezinski is doing that, but you can confirm for yourself at clinicaltrials.gov that the Brzezinski Clinic has initiated 62 clinical trials, but only completed one. Fact 2. The Brzezinski Clinic charges patients to receive trial medications. In addition to the very low rate of completion of all these clinical trials, Dr. Brzezinski has taken the almost unheard of step of charging patients for their participation in a clinical trial to test a drug that the clinic has a patent on. These trials, especially phase one and two trials, often use guesses to determine a safe starting dose or what the eventual side effects will be. Patients bear some risk of harm which usually entitles them to at least free study medication. This is almost universal in clinical trials. There are a few exceptions where the number of patients enrolled is very large or the drug is very expensive to produce. 
So why is the Brzezinski Clinic charging patients tens or hundreds of thousands of dollars to participate in these open-ended trials? They seem to be potentially profiting from what should be costly R&D for any other research clinic. It's a red flag for me. The fact that insurance companies won't pay for the untested drugs means that the financial burden falls entirely on loved ones and charities or members of the community. For a family, that can mean facing a choice between pursuing a therapy they're told is experimental and effective, possibly facing bankruptcy or debt, or facing the death of a loved one. If the Brzezinski Clinic want to earn their money back to make a profit, I would suggest they start running trials in earnest, give study medication at no charge, then bring their cancer therapy to market so that it can be distributed to everyone in the world and not just patients at the clinic in Houston who can afford the steep fees. Fact 3. The Brzezinski Clinic make heavy use of marketing techniques. You may have seen the Brzezinski movie titled Brzezinski, Cancer is Serious Business, produced, directed, and narrated by Eric Marola. Eric is a commercial art director making promotional video content for the likes of Campbell Soup, Volkswagen, and Old Navy. The film, if you choose to watch it, is a rather unabashed 100-minute commercial for Dr. Brzezinski and his treatment. The problem is that it clearly doesn't tell the whole story or examine the issue from both sides. It appeals a great deal to pathos and testimonials and conspiracy. You'll also notice the use of meaningless marketing buzzwords. This is most notable in the use of the term gene-targeted. In science, this refers to the specific practice of introducing an agent which interacts in the cell with a single sequence of RNA or DNA, the gene or gene product most responsible for the progression of the cancer. Brzezinski, on the other hand, has used the term as a way of describing his special therapy since it causes the cell to make more or less of a gene product. Using his definition, aspirin, a banana, or walking outside on a sunny day are all gene-targeted therapies, since they all cause your body to produce more of one gene product or less of another. In addition to his participation in a promotional film made by a director who also makes commercials, Brzezinski employs web marketers and social media agents. In the recent past, they've drawn criticism for their use of threats against blogs, videos, and commenters who were critical of the methods of this clinic in Houston. This even included attempts to silence a 17-year-old critic, an act which was later disavowed by the PR director after it gained public scrutiny, and email threats against one blogger's family that included a satellite photo of his house, including the address. I don't think these are the actions of an ethical workplace, but even more importantly, I don't think the marketing focus is consistent with a clinic selling a miraculous, if still unproven, treatment for cancer. Let's make this quite clear. If you had an amazing new breakthrough in cancer treatment, would you really need any marketing at all? Would you need a PR director or social media agents to comb the internet, suppressing criticism? I think the best solution to the kind of difficult choice facing someone Considering a referral to the Brzezinski Clinic is clear information. I hope I've given you three points to consider that you can independently confirm. If you or a loved one are facing the ominous Big C, I want to assure you that there are some amazing people out there who are working tirelessly on your behalf. We make progress every year in diagnosing earlier, treating more effectively. Hope does not go in vain. But don't allow that hope to blind you to people who would try to profit from your desperation. Thanks for watching. Every cell of each plant and animal contains genetic information coded onto the DNA molecules. The model